Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Father, we are here before Thee. We are here to say thank you for the plans you have for us, for the love that you have been dispensing upon each and every one of us, O oh Lord. We thank you that when we call on you, you ask, not by our righteousness, but by your mercy, by your faithfulness, by your love. So, Father, as we have gathered in your presence again, may you come down mightily and take over this prayer platform. We thank you for what you have done in the daytime. And we thank you for what you are going to do this night season. In this time of fellowship, we know that your light is already shining, O oh Lord. Come and have your way. Come and speak to your people. Come and touch your people. Father, wash us with thy precious blood, such that we shall be whiter than snow, in the name of Jesus. We are here to say thank you, Papa. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover this message of this night with the blood of Jesus. Father, fill your people with thy power tonight, O oh Lord. Come and be the one to minister. Father, let me not speak on my own accord. Be the one to speak, Papa. You know how empty that your son is. You know, Father, he cannot even distinguish his right from left. But whether we ask you to come and take over, fill him with thy fire, fill him with thy power, give him that spiritual enablement to function in this message. Therefore, take over, O oh Lord. Use the words that will come out of his mouth to solve the problems of your people. Father, to you be all the glory for what we know you have done already. For you are a prayer answering God. When we call on you, you answer. As we have called on you again, we know you have answered already. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We invite the angels of God to come down and be with us in this prayer. And we are asking the Holy Spirit to prevail over this prayer. Holy Spirit, take control. Holy Spirit, take control. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. My dear friends, I welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And today we shall take our reading from Luke chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. Luke Chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. Amen. And I'm reading from New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition. Luke chapter number 8, verse 26 to 40. New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition. Then they arrived at the country of Gerasim, which is opposite Galilee. And he stepped out on land. A man of the city who had demons met him for a long time he had worn no clothes and he did not live in a house but in the tombs when he saw jesus 
Jesus. He fell down before him. And then he shouted at the top of his voice. What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torture me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? Then he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abbeys. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding. And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these swine. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine. And they heard rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine heads saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to see, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them. For they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and they returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus has done for him. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for the Lord. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus. But our friends, I have a message titled, He Will Lift You Up. He Will Lift You Up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My friends, God has taken us to this scripture, sharing with us how he lifted up a man that had been forgotten, a man that was seized 
by a force of darkness. The Bible called him demon-possessed man. The name of this man was not given, but he was identified by the situation he went through or was going through. And so the Bible called him the demoniac, a man possessed with a demon. The situation of this man was so terrible that he was living in the tombs. The Bible says that the enemy, the devil, the demon, seized him and kept him guard and bound him and put him in the in the tombs. He could not live in the house. They took away his clothes, made him naked, made him to live in pens. And nobody could help the situation of this young man. It was this situation that Jesus met him. It was a very bad case, a very bad situation. His parents had given up his relatives had given up on him. His loved ones had given up on him. People who wanted to help him had given up. He had been taken to the house of, the, of, of, of people who cast demons, but no way. I mean, people with expertise in pleading with God to intervene in cases of human beings had intervened in the of these people, of this boy, but no way. But when Jesus came into the matter, that was the end of the matter. Rabbi could not solve it. No one could solve it. But Jesus saw the problem. And I want to tell you tonight that no matter how bad your situation may be, there is somebody whose name is Jesus who would meet you tonight. He will meet you tonight and solve that problem. He will arrest that problem. No matter how bad it is, maybe for years you have been going through a stormy relationship, perhaps for years you have been struggling with health challenges and problems, and maybe doctors are giving up, or maybe you are going through certain things that you don't even understand how to explain them. But I have a message for you tonight that Jesus is crossing that sea to come to you. In the name of Jesus. But I want you to look beyond this story. And I want to see yourself in this story somehow. It is a story of a man who met Jesus in the worst way. In the most terrible moment in his life when he was in the valley of the shadow of death. A situation that incapacitated this man, arrested him, took him out from his own people, and they put, took him out of a beautiful house and put him in the wilds, made him to start living with wild animals. Demons are wicked. No wonder they are called the, 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 the world of wickedness. St. Paul says, we are fighting not against flesh and blood, but against principles and powers in high places. That's what I'm talking about. Demonic forces. <laughs> but even though that this man met Jesus... In the worst way, yet he left Jesus in the best way. He came to Jesus fully mad, fully possessed of demons. But by the time he was leaving Jesus, he was in full mind, conscious of himself, full control of his mind. He made Jesus naked, but he by the time Jesus was going, by the time Jesus was living, he was clothed and in his right mind. He made Jesus possess, but by the time Jesus was going, leaving him, he was back to his full senses. I want you to see yourself in this story, and I hope you are. I don't know what you have been struggling with before coming to the prayer line. But I pray for you today, may the God who made this demoniac meet you and take away, divorce that spirit from your life in the name of Jesus. The story of the demoniac is a story that exemplifies what Satan will do with the life 
and what Jesus can do for a life. That's what I see in the life of that man. He was messed up. He was deranged. He was crippled. He was imprisoned. He was living in the tombs. He could not live in houses. He was living in the tombs. You don't see houses in the tombs. In other words, rain will fall and fall on him. Sun will shine. Even the the heat of the day would impinge on him. And yet, he had no option than to receive whatever thing that life gives to him. Whatever thing that demons give to him. He was a typical example of someone who was afflicted. As if that was not enough. The demons put stones on his hands and made him to use his own hands to bruise his body. So you see sores, wounds all over his body. We're not talking of what he eats. You don't find food in the tombs. So he must have been eating maybe grasses. He must have been eating worms. The devil compelled him to change diet, to begin to join the animals, the wilds, to live their life. Took him away from his loved ones, put him in a solitary place, made him to suffer loneliness. This was the gift of Satan to this boy. But when Jesus came, he took away every gift that Satan has given to this man and gave him life. And this makes it clear the mission of Jesus in your life and in my life. John 10, 10 and the Bible says, that the devil, the enemy, Satan, the devil has come to kill, to destroy, and to take away. Indeed, he destroyed the destiny of this young boy. But Jesus came and he gave him life. Now that tells us, don't tempt them be, and the Bible says, but I have come. This is Jesus talking. I have come, but I have come. Wow. To give you life. And to give you life in fullness. We see. Therefore. In the life of this man. The picture of what Satan can do. In the life of someone. We also see in his life. What God can do. In the life of someone. We don't need to look far. Just look at the young, this man's life. Satan painted him black. Jesus painted him with life. I don't know who is painting your life, but if it is the devil that is painting your life with the gloominess, painting your life with death, with shame, with sickness, painting your life with divorce, with miscarriage, with, with the terrible things in life, I pray today, let Jesus come into your life and paint you. With holiness, with victory, with deliverance. First John 3 verse 8. And the Bible says, For this reason Jesus Christ was made manifest that he shall destroy all the works of the devil. I pray today that what Jesus did in the life of this man, may that be what he will do in your life. May he come into your life and deliver you. Change your ugly story. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> the Bible took time to explain to us the terrible misery, the captivity that this man found himself. This man had a name. The devil took that name and gave him the name demoniac. 
the name he used to have had nothing to do with demon, but the devil changed all that and gave him a, 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 a demon. Nothing good, good comes from the devil. Do you see yourself in this man's story? Are you going through terrible demonic attack in your life? There are homes and families that have been infested with demonic activities. I pray today, may Jesus cross the lake and come to your life and come to your family. And drive out of the family everything that is diabolical in the name of Jesus. Jesus. This story of this man is a story that illustrates the unpleasant life without Christ. When we do not have Jesus in our lives, then by default, demons take over. The Satan takes over. There's nothing like a vacuum in the spirit. If you don't know it now, there's nothing like a vacuum. It's either that that life is filled with Jesus or it is filled with the devil. Both of them cannot coexist. And neither, neither would there be a vacuum. That is a case where there will be no demonic positions and there will be no uh, life of the Holy Spirit. It must be one. <laughs> and because the devil took over the life of this man, then we see the works of the devil in his life. Destruction. But the story of this man, in as much as it illustrates the unpleasant life without Christ, it also shows us the happiness of a life with Christ or a life in Christ. Because when Christ came to him for the first time, he had a real, true, sincere, abiding happiness. The Bible says he sat at the at the feet of Jesus. When Jesus wanted to leave, you know, he, he wanted to live with Jesus. He wanted to go with Jesus. He wanted to follow him. This man that delivered me, whatever place you go, I will go with you. What a heart of appreciation. What a heart of gratitude. Many of us, God change our ugly situations and we forget God. We forget God. Many of us may remember when we were single or when they were single and they were crying, doing all sorts of nice vigils and fasting, praying, going to places for prayer, spending nights and days in prayers, going into long sessions of prayers. Crying to God, please say to me, Lord, I want to get married. How come you got married and you don't have time again to serve that same God? How come? It's an error. It's an error. It's a lack of gratitude in the highest order. How come you got married and you never had a child. You have been crying to God to give you children. And after years, you keep crying. You keep disturbing. And then at the end, God said to you and gave you children. And now you don't go to church again. You don't pray the way you used to pray. And you say, oh, I am busy. It's an error. This young man represents the character of following Jesus as, as a gratitude, as appreciation for what he has done for us. And so he decided on his own to leave his kindred, to leave his people. By the way, he had lived, left them long ago, leaving the tombs. But now he wants to live with Jesus. 
and in Jesus. He wanted to follow Jesus. It was Jesus that told him, my son, don't worry, just go back. Let your people see you and believe that truly there is a, a Messiah that is in town. Many people didn't know that Jesus was in town. But because they saw the situation of the man, of this boy, then they would believe that indeed Jesus was in town, the man of Galilee, the miracle worker. That boy became an evidence of the working power of God, the, the, the miracle that Jesus gives. And I pray for you. May God do something amazing in your life tonight that the world will see and say, indeed, there is God in the house of Jesus and many ministries. And that God is here tonight to bless you. That God is here tonight to fight your battle. That God is here tonight to make a way where there's no way for you, my friend. So don't cry. Don't cry as if there's no hope for you. Whatever you're going through, no matter how bad it is, no matter how terrible that storm is, Jesus is able to change it. I mean, your case cannot be so bad to be compared with this man's problem. This young man was completely demonized. Crippled completely. Destiny crippled. He, he was an example of a life that was completely wrecked. The only thing they left for him was just to breathe in air. But he wasn't actually living life. Even though he was alive. He wasn't living life. Your case is not as bad as this. But Jesus came to this worst of cases, to this very miserable situation, and they transformed this man. Wow! Gave him life. This is what I want Jesus to do in my life tonight. I don't know the name of this man, but it seems to me that his name is Amazing Grace. Because remember that Jesus was with the people, preaching to them, then feeding them. Then all of a sudden, he now decided to cross to the other side with his disciples. The people didn't even know where Jesus was going. And so they were still waiting for Jesus. That's why at the end of this story, you, you see, see where the Bible says that when Jesus went back, then they welcomed him. Didn't you hear that in Luke chapter 8 verse 40? The Bible says, in Luke 8 verse 40, now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Where did that crowd come from? If you started him from the beginning of that chapter, you see the, the progression of that story. That Jesus actually was preaching to the crowd. And they were enjoying him. He was doing miracles there. He was teaching them so many things. <laughs> All right? And then, he now got into the boat with the disciples. And said to them, let us go to the other side of the lake. The disciples didn't know why Jesus said, let us go to the other side of the lake. But Jesus knew. Jesus, being God, although man, saw someone who was living in pains. 
somebody in chains, somebody under captivity, somebody arrested by forces of darkness. And Jesus, even though that this man was not praying to, he, to Jesus to come, neither was he praying for Jesus to come. No, no, no. He wasn't praying. He was out of his mind. But Jesus showed him mercy. Decided to enter the boat. Decided to get on a journey to come to him. It was the grace upon the life of this man that brought Jesus to his life. And I pray that that grace upon your life shall bring Jesus into your life to change your ugly story in the name of Jesus. And so Jesus called the other side. And on their way to go to the other side, at the middle of the lake, storm came and tried to capsize the boat. Does that ring bell? That tells you that the demon in that boy knew that salvation was coming to the to the life of that young man. And then he, they now decided to go and attack the rescue team. To attack the boots. To attack Jesus and his disciples. That storm that came at the middle of the lake was to make sure that Jesus does not get to that boy. Demons are deadly. Don't play with them. But pray against them. <laughs> the reason for that storm to capsize the boat was just because of that boy. To make sure that he doesn't get the deliverance. I don't need to tell you how many times I was on my way to go for a mission, maybe on deliverance missions, and they all of a sudden fly to get cancelled. And you, I will have to spend the whole day at the airport. Sometimes you may run into some problems here and there. All this is where wind storms trying to stop me from going to pray for somebody. <laughs> Jesus. Many of you who may end up in the future in the deliverance ministry, it is wise to be God in the spirit, to pray fervently. Because some of the forces that you may go to confront may come on time to attack you. Just to make sure you don't get to that place. <laughs> I've had a case where someone was telling me how he became sick. He traveled all the way from overseas. Came for a revival program. People were waiting for him. Church was full of people. That was where he became sick. The storm, the enemy, knew that through him, God will deliver people. And so they came to attack him. What is the storm against your life? Because God is going to use you to deliver somebody. I pray tonight that Jesus will quench that storm in the name of Jesus. As the Jesus and his disciples did not perish in that storm, so you will not perish. You will come out to still accomplish the work that God has called you to do. My dear people of God, Jesus spoke to that storm, and the storm ceased. The Bible says that Jesus rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and the dead ceased, and there was a calm. Wow! So when they now came to the end of the journey, Jesus 
now headed for the for the graveside. Then this boy sighted Jesus and ran towards him. Do you run towards Jesus or do you run away from him? This boy was delivered and then he chose to follow Jesus. That is Christianity. That is gratitude. Ingratitude is when somebody blesses you and you don't show appreciation. What God wants from us is a life of appreciation. To live the life of Jesus. To follow his ways. To listen to him. I pray that grace will follow you. I also pray that amazing grace will be your portion. So that whatever that I want to stop your deliverance, that God will arrest that storm and let your deliverance come to you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. May that grace of God come to you. The, the grace that saved that man, may that grace come to your life. I am a wretched sinner. That grace of God has come to save me, a wretched sinner. I was lost, but now I am found. I, I was blind, but now I can see. Because Jesus came to my life. Oh, wait a minute. The life of this man, is that not a picture of a life that had been blinded by the enemy? He didn't want to live in the house. He preferred to live in the tombs. He preferred to live in the wilds because the enemies had altered his mind. Blinded him so that what he saw as his own house will be the tombs. When we are living in sin, we are very comfortable with the life of sin. We don't want to come out from there. We call it life. We call it enjoyment. We call it something to celebrate. We call it fun. We dance it. We drink it. We, we, we celebrate it. But that is death. That is death. We, we see people who are preaching the gospel. We say, oh, they are lost. They are out of their minds. Meanwhile, you are the one that is actually out of your mind. But because you are blinded by the devil, you don't see the misery of where you are. And so this boy was blinded. But we met Jesus. Now he could see. This boy was lost. His own people could not see him again. This boy was living in the wild, in the, wild, in the wilds, among the mountains, among the tombs. That was with the animals. That, that was what way he was living. He was lost. In fact, he represents a picture of someone lost. But when Jesus came to him, he was found. Wow. And, and the, this aspect of looking at the situation of this boy is taking us to an opportunity for us to really review and look at what life is like when we don't have Jesus in us. Yes, his life magnifies God's grace, God's amazing grace at work. But at the same time, his life, I'm talking about the life of this boy, also reveals certain important spiritual truths. My friends, 
It was the enemy that took this boy into the life of captivity. Today, sin takes people into captivity. People become slaves to the devil through sin. That's what the devil wants. He wants us to sin so that we become his slaves. Sin brings one down. Now let's go back to the scripture. Luke chapter 8 verse 26 to 27. The Bible says, And they sailed, who are they? Jesus and disciples. And they sailed to the country of the Gasserines, or the, the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. Can you imagine? And when he had come out onto the land, he was met by a certain man from the city who was possessed with demons and who had no and had not put on any clothing for a long time. Wow. And he was not living in a house but in the tombs. Now I would ask you, what do you understand there? Hmm? <laughs> oh my goodness. Galilee is a place that brought the salvation to the world. Jesus of Galilee, for example. But the Gerasenes is a place that represents where this enemy, the devil, kept this boy. And what separated Galilee from Gesserine is that river or that lake. It is sin that separates us from our own Galilee. It is sin that separates us from Jesus. And so, when we are living in sin, we give the devil power over our lives. We ask him, run the affairs of my life. That's what we say to him. And so the story of this boy is a classic example of the presence and the power of sin and Satan in a life. I have preached to prostitutes. And uh, <laughs> I had some of them, uh, they look at them and say, my friend, <laughs> if you want us to go inside, we'll go inside. You, you know, you, know, you, know you, you, you see that, you see that this, it wasn't her talking. It was the devil talking. When you are living in abject sin, it is something that gives pleasure that leads to death. Look at what the devil did in life for this boy. Nobody in his right mind will make that as a choice. But that was exactly what the sin, that's how powerful sin is in our lives. And that's why we should run away from sin. Because sin leads to captivity. This boy was living in captivity. Perhaps Luke, who documented this account, is actually using the opportunity to remind us of the power of sin. Let us look, consider where this man lived. We, when we consider where he lived, then we see how sin and Satan can degrade a life. Look at the, the, the life of this boy. It, it was nothing short of a degraded, horrible life. A life in squalor. A life in shame. A life completely, uh, you know, deprived of the Jews of life. You can't look at the, that, the, that boy's life in the tomb and admire him. 
Why would they admire him? Is there anything to the man admire his life? <laughs> he was completely degraded in life. He did not live in a warm, comfortable house, but lived in a cold, horribly hot and dreaded tombs. That was where the devil took him. A place of horror. The devil took him to the house of horror. Sin takes us to a house of horror. All right? His mental state was completely devastated. The devil rearranged his mind. That was sin does. Do you hear that? The Bible says that this boy had not put on any clothing on him for a long time. Please take note of that for a long what? A long time. What does that mean? It means he was naked for a long time. So can you imagine somebody being naked? Think of it. Somebody naked. The rain will fall, fall on him. Not it, no, he can't protect himself. He, there was no house for him to take shelter. Snow will fall. It will fall on him. The sun will heat so badly, he will be profusing, but he had no option than to be there. That is hell. That's hellish. But that was where the devil kept his boy. The Bible says he had to be placed in chains and shackles and kept under guard. Oh my goodness. Do I need to remind you that the, de that the devil puts us in chains when we reject Jesus? Maybe I may have to remind you this moment. Anyone who is not in Christ is a slave to the devil. I already said that at the beginning. But I wish to say at this point that he who has rejected Jesus is by default in captivity. That is in chains, in shackles. The devil bound this boy. <laughs> Jesus. This boy the Bible did not tell us about his early life. We don't even know how these demons came into his life. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe this boy was called to be an evangelist. And the devil knew that many would come to know Jesus through him. And so went to attack him this way. Made sure that he was completely devastated and arrested. And it began to make sense to me that Jesus, who would send evangelists to the world, must have seen that there was an evangelist, a messenger, who was under captivity, who was arrested by the devil, and he had gone to set him free. Remember, Jesus came to the, uh, to the, to the garden scenes just because of this boy. The moment he delivered him, he left. He left. Because he had done what he came for. And at the moment he delivered him, this boy went to follow Jesus. But Jesus said, no, go into the town and tell them what happened to you. Let them see. You know what Jesus was telling him? Go and preach. Go and show yourself to the people. I have called you to be an evangelist. Go back and tell the people. Leave your destiny. Your destiny is to be a preacher. That is your destiny. I've called you to be an evangelist, to proclaim the work of God, to proclaim that I am the Lord. 
And when he wanted to follow Jesus, Jesus said, no, don't follow me. Go and tell the people in your city, in your town. Tell them what has happened to you. And they preach it to them. Evangelism. This boy was called to be an evangelist. But he was arrested. He was not preaching. He was rather in captivity. But when Jesus came to him, he liberated him and sent him to his missions to do what? To preach the gospel of Jesus. So he became a preacher. Is there a possibility that somebody listening to my voice today is anointed to be a preacher, to be a gospel singer, to be a revivalist? But you are under captivity. You are arrested. This message of this night is for somebody. That was my own story. I didn't know I was anointed. But when I, when those days, I remember when I would be in the spirit, I see myself inside a coffin. I didn't even know what that meant. But every time I keep seeing myself in a coffin, I keep seeing myself in the chains. I keep, I don't even know what that meant. Until one day, when an angel came, very powerful angel, very powerful but humble. I mean, you could touch his power. You could also touch his humility. He just told me, what well, come, follow me. I followed him. We came to a place. I saw a coffin. He just lifted his hand, made a sign of the cross over the over the cross. I mean, over the coffin. Before my eyes, what I saw was bah! the coffin blew open. Who was inside? Myself was inside, and I was now seeing myself. I mean, it was difficult to explain to me really. I mean, I couldn't understand that. And right inside, there was a Bible I was holding. I was holding a Bible and locked up in, and sealed inside the coffin. And they, both the Bible and myself were covered with dust. Because, as if to say, something that suggests that, that, he, that I had been there for years in that situation. That I had been there for a long time. You know, when, a, when you are in a place, you're not moving for a long time, you'll be covered with dust. That's why when you don't, you're not in a house for a long time, you come back and maybe after a month, I mean, sorry, and maybe after a year, you're covered with the house. You're going to see dust everywhere. No matter how you lock the windows, you see dust. I saw dust. I couldn't believe it. I was looking at myself, and I was still looking at myself inside the coffin. But I was holding a Bible. But both Bible and myself were locked up and sealed in a coffin. I'm telling my own story. I looked at this angel. He smiled. He now touched me in the coffin. And I came back. I don't know how that one entered and made with one person. That's what I cannot explain here. And I, you know what I told this angel? I said, what kind of thing is this? <laughs> he made understand you have been in captivity. You are called to be an evangelist. But the devil has come to bound you. He bound you and kept you for ages. There are people who are crying because of because you are in captivity. There are people who are in bondage because you are in bondage. And I want to tell you, my friend, you who you 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 always listen to my voice. There are people today who are in bondage because you are in bondage. There are people today who are in darkness because you are in captivity. There are people today who are crying because you are bound in chains. And this angel, when I was trying to I was praising him. I said, oh my goodness. I say I've never seen this kind of power. That this power is so amazing. He smiled. You know what he told me? He said, to God be the glory. God is the one that has power. Very humble. That what he told me. He said, he said, no, give God the glory, not me. God is the one who gave the power. He wasn't even doing it as somebody who did something serious. And right there he left me and went back to heaven. Ever since that experience, I have never been the same. I'm to have not told you my own story. I am praying for somebody today who is in captivity. May Jesus deliver you. May Jesus deliver you. People who are in the coffin, 
may you come back to life in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. People who are put up in the chain, destinies in the chain, may God deliver you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. People who are living in, the, in Satan's house of horror, may Jesus deliver you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Father, touch your people. Father, touch your people. People who are living in, in, in the midst of the dead, just like the, the, this demoniac, may God deliver you today in the name of Jesus. Every door that is open in your life, through which dead people are trafficking into your life, I close that door right now in the name of Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Jesus. People who walk about naked in a dream, in the spirit, People that their marriage is naked, their death is naked, their business is naked, their career is naked. I pray for you today. May God intervene. May God deliver you. May Jesus show up in the name of Jesus. Woo! Jesus. Touch your people. Touch your people. At this hour, Father, may you manifest your power of deliverance. Let people who are in chains be delivered now. What you did for me, what you did for me, what you did for me. Hey, Papa, what you did for me. If you hadn't done what you did for me, these people wouldn't have gathered in this ministry. This ministry wouldn't have come to exist. But you have done it for me to deliver me. I pray, Father, that what you have done for me, by way of delivering me, Papa, do it for as many that are crying to you for deliverance. Deliver your people now. There are people now. Let that anointing flow. Anointing that break the chain. Anointing that break the tomb. Anointing that break the cap people. Who break the chain. Break the darkness. May that anointing come to you now. That angel of God that several sent to me to deliver me. May that angel come to you now. May that angel come to you now. And deliver you now. In the name of Jesus. No more house in the horror. You can't be living in a place of horror. Ah. My friends, God restored the destiny of this boy. And he went back to his office as an evangelist. It is time for you to go to your office. In the name of Jesus. I say, go to the office now and begin to function according to your calling in the name of Jesus. I don't know this boy, but I'm here to defend his case. I'm here to defend his case that he was not born that way. Don't ask me whether I knew him, but I know he couldn't have been born that way. Satan came along the way and entered into his life. Many people listen to my voice now. What are going through now? You are not born that way. But the devil came in along the way to that destroy you. May God deliver you today in the name of Jesus. <sighs> this boy was born an innocent, pure young boy. But, but the devil came in and made him guilty. Sin will take the pure. And make them impure. Do you hear that? Sin will take the innocent and make them guilty. Maybe I may have to remind you the case of Joshua. Joshua, a priest of God, a holy man, a pure man, but the devil wore him the garment of condemnation. God did not make Joshua that way. The devil made him that way. Sin will take the clean and make them unclean. Sin will take the moral and make them immoral. Sin will take the decent and make them indecent. Sin will take the good and make them bad. Sin will take the saint and make them to be like the devil. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Look at the way the devil painted this boy. 
Contrary to the picture the, the world paints, sin always lowers a person and never lifts them up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Father, we thank you for this message of this night. Woo! Jesus! Oh my goodness. I pray that God will give you beauty again. He gave beauty for this boy to this boy. He delivered him. He gave him a reason to shout, Glory be to you, Lord Jesus. May God do the same thing in your life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Let me tell you something I know. Sin and Satan can take someone to the bottom. They cannot take you to the top. They will take you to the bottom. But even though the sin, even though the Satan, even though the demons will take somebody, a person, to the bottom of life, but J-E-S-U-S will lift you up. He will lift you up. He, Jesus, will lift you up. Remember the title of his talk. He will lift you up. He will lift you up. That's the title of this talk. And the truth through Jesus will lift you up. He lifted up the life of this boy. Took him over misery and placed him on the platform, on the pedestal of honor. <laughs> Jesus. I am crying that he touches you. This man w w was living in, 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 in satanic uh, attack. Oh! But Jesus came and transformed his life. Come on! I'm praying for you, my friend. May Jesus bring a total transformation to your life in the name of Jesus. May he free you from Satan's stronghold. Jesus commanded the demons to come out of the man. And demons did not even argue with Jesus. They obeyed. They were pleading with Jesus, please, don't take us to the Abyss Road, not like that place. Could you take us to the swine? And they said, oh yeah, go there. And they went into the swine, setting this man free from the power of Satan. When we accept Jesus like this boy, when we run to Jesus like this man, we shall be set free from the power of sin and Satan. What lovers, loved ones, parents, siblings, what they could not do for this man, Jesus was able to accomplish in just a visit. Can Jesus visit you tonight and change your life? Just one visit enough, one visit of Jesus is enough to change your life. May he visit you tonight. In the name of Jesus. May Jesus visit you tonight. Oh Jesus. Papa visit your people. Can you pray and say Jesus. I want to visit. Visit me Lord. Visit me Lord. The life of this boy. Is a clear case of how powerful Satan is. But you know what. It also expresses how most powerful our God is. That Jesus is all powerful. We're not, we're not even debating that Satan is powerful. He, he is powerful, really. Look at what he is to this boy. He is powerful. But Jesus is most powerful. He's all powerful. Satan is strong. Don't tell me he's not strong. If you say he's not strong, then you, know, you, you, are, you have no biblical support. Satan is powerful. He's strong. But Jesus is stronger. Satan is mighty. But Jesus is almighty. Satan may lower your life. But Jesus will lift up your life. He doesn't have the mission over your life. Satan wants to pull you down. Jesus wants to pull you up. Oh 
my goodness. Father, I pray that you touch your people. Many of us have wandered away from our father's house, just like this boy. The devil took him away from his father's house under compulsion. But Jesus brought him back to his father's house. How about that? Is there any child in your family that has left the house out of disobedience, bringing shame, heartbreak to the family? Is there a prodigal son in the family that is not bringing honor to the family? That bringing police and troubles and you are not going to prison, but the only reason why you go to prison to visit your son. May God break that chain today. May God deliver that child today. May God deliver that child today. In the name of Jesus. Every chain against that boy be broken now. In the name of Jesus. This boy was brought near to death. But Jesus saved him. Maybe your situation may have taken you near, near to the point of death. But I pray tonight, may Jesus deliver you. Our hearts have been hardened. Our spiritual bodies look as lifeless as, as anything we may think of. But Jesus wants to bring life. And may he bring life tonight in the name of Jesus. Our Lord Jesus is eager for us to return home to the Father. Once we return, he will take our lifeless spirits and restore them to health. We need to let Jesus pick us up and take us to his house, to his father's house. Jesus has a mission for all of us to give us life, life in full. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. May he bless you from Zion. May he transform your life. May he fight your battle in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. May our life show the work of God in our lives. Remember the life of this boy who was delivered, the life of the demoniac, when he was delivered, his life became a testimony in his community. May your life be a testimony in your family, in your place of work, in your community, in your parish, in the name of Jesus. May your life be an evidence that Jesus has saved you, once lost, but now you are found. In the name of Jesus. May people see what Jesus has done in your life, and then know and believe that because of what he has done in your life, that that same Jesus will do the same for them. Others need to know what Jesus can do for them. And God has sent each of us to tell them. Do you know that God could have commissioned angels to deliver this glorious message? But he chose us to deliver the message. He chose that demoniac to deliver the message. You are not here in this world by chance. May God deliver you. May God give you for signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. When this boy was delivered, he was not delivered without the, the swine being, being, being drowned. I wonder how many around and near us are drowning in sin right now. In loneliness, in hurt, in doubt, while we, oh my goodness, who could help them do not realize it? My dear friends, let us rescue the perishing. Because of this boy, he deliverance closed somebody's business. The swine was somebody's business. How do we know that? And it is, oh my goodness, don't mind me, my friend. The, but that, that, that's true. It's for that somebody's business. But, but that business was round. This must be a very powerful deliverance. 
Some deliverance, let me tell you, there are certain deliverances that can cause a wreck somewhere. Maybe this will be a talk of another day. But this boy's deliverance caused, caused swine to get drowned. But Jesus said to him, you know what? Don't follow me. Go into the town. There are people who are drowning in sin. Go and deliver them. Go and rescue the perishing. There are many who are perishing in our lives today, around us today. We need to stand in God to pray for them. We need to seek the lost. The Lord has a message for us today. And that message is this. If sin has a grip on your life, if sin has you down, Jesus can lift us up, can lift you up. He can transform your life. That's the message tonight for you. He can deliver us from the grip of Satan and provide us with forgiveness, with peace, with hope, and with a new direction. Therefore, let us come to Him and adore Him. Let us accept Him as our Lord and Savior. Let us come to Him that He may lift us up. Let us come to Him the way we are, and He will clothe us. Let us come to Him with our nudity, and He will cover us. He will clothe us with the garment of righteousness. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for the privilege you have given to a sinner and unworthy man like me to deliver this message in your name. I pray, Father, that you use this message to touch people all over the world. Let this message bring hope to the hopeless. Let this message make a sinner a saint in the name of Jesus. Let this message baptize somebody with sainthood, with life of glory, with life of, life of grace. A life of repentance. Father, let this message weaken the grip of sin over your people. And may this message be the reason why somebody will testify. Because you have lifted him or her up. Transform us, O oh Lord. Deliver us from the grip of Satan. Bring the reign of forgiveness and peace and hope and a new direction in life. This and many more we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen and amen.